In this session we are going to complete our overall corridor model by finishing this corridor in the gap area. Let me zoom in. You can see at this point the corridor includes the bull noses as well as some feature lines that I've added to use as lane targets. Let me back up. If we take a look at the lanes coming into and out of this gap, we can see they're virtually identical. For that reason, I'm going to recycle one of the assemblies that we made earlier. Let me zoom out. I'll pan this down. Let's create a copy of this assembly, SR7 Traffic Median. I'm going to launch the copy command. I'll select the assembly. I'll press enter and we'll just pick this up from a point on screen. I'm going to take this up and we'll place it a little closer to the gap. Let's rename it now. I'll select the assembly and I'll come over to my properties palette. I'm going to call this SR7 blend area. Let's zoom in. If you remember when we created this assembly earlier, we pulled these lanes from the Civil 3D library. We did that because we needed lanes that were going to tie to a median edge while maintaining the slope. I don't have a median edge in this gap, so I really don't need these lanes anymore. Let me swap these out with some F dot lanes. I'll do that by selecting the assembly. I'll come up and open the tool palette. Here on the lanes tab, I'm going to choose F dot lane. I'll come down and choose replace from the command line and I'll pick this lane on the right. I'll press enter a couple times until it asks me for another subassembly to replace. I'll click this one on the left and I'll press escape a couple times to get out of the command. Next, I'm going to select both of these new lanes and I'll go over to the properties palette. I'm going to adjust their common properties. I know the pavement two depth is going to be an inch and a half. Base depth will be six. Sub base depth will be four. Let's press escape. I'll select this lane on the right and then I'll come over and we'll give it a logical name. I'll call this right lane number one and then I'm practicing good form in the event I add super elevation to this alignment later. This is going to represent a right inside lane. Let's select the lane on the left. We'll do the same thing. We'll give it a logical name. Left lane number one and then this would represent a left inside lane. Let's zoom in. Since there's no median in the gap area, I don't need the link to marked point or the marked point. Let me select both of these and I'll press delete. In fact, I really don't need the curb and gutter either. I'm going to leave that on for right now. Let's build the corridor in the gap area using the assembly as it is and we'll just see what we get. Let's zoom in. I'm going to add this new content to the existing corridor model. I'll select the corridor and I'll go to corridor properties. I'm just going to add another baseline. I'm going to add PGL right. The baseline is defined by a horizontal and vertical. I've chosen the horizontal. Let me come over and choose the vertical. This is going to be the PGL right proposed profile. I will then right click on the baseline and I'll choose add region. I'm going to use the SR7 blend area assembly. Let's open this up. Here's our region. Let's assign the start and end stations. I'm going to click the select button for start and I'm going to choose the end point right here. I will then come down and click the select button for the end. We'll take this down to the end point on the other side of the gap. Next we'll adjust the targets. I'll click the target ellipsis button. We'll take care of the PGL left link first. That's going to be based on an alignment. I'll choose PGL left and I'll add that. This also represents a vertical target, so we'll do PGL left link. This will be based on a profile, the one assigned to the PGL left alignment. We'll choose PGL left proposed profile. Let's do the left lane outside. This is going to be tied to the edge of traveled way left. And then we'll do the right lane outside. This will be tied to the edge of traveled way right. Let's click OK and OK, OK. Let's rebuild and we'll back up and take a look. Here we can see my PGL on the right. I've got my three lanes to the outside. This one's tying to the edge of traveled way. Here I've got my PGL on the left with my three lanes to the outside. This one's tying to the edge of traveled way on the left. If I zoom in, you can see here's the curb and gutter that we don't need. What I'd like to do is swap these curbs out with Florida DOT lanes. And I'd like to use those lanes to target the geometry that we made earlier. Let's do that. I'm going to pan this over. From the tool palette, I'll choose F dot lane and I'm going to choose replace. I'll select this curb and gutter on the right side. I will then select the curb and gutter on the left side. I'll press escape. Let's select both of these and we'll adjust their common properties. We'll set pavement two depth to an inch and a half, base depth to six, sub base to four. 
I'm going to change their lane width as well. Let's make these five feet wide and I'll press escape. Let's give them logical names. I'll select the one on the right and I'm going to call this right blend. I will then select the one on the left and I'll call this left blend. Let's zoom in. Now, do these slopes matter? Actually, no. These are just schematic in this case, because in all cases, these points are going to be driven by targets, both horizontal and vertical. So really, the widths of these lanes don't matter here either. Those are also schematic. Let me pan back over to the corridor, and we'll assign the new targets. I'll select the corridor. I'll go to Corridor Properties, and I'm going to come down to the Target Ellipsis button. Let's take care of Right Blend. I'll click in that field. In this case, I'm going to be selecting entities from the drawing. Let me choose Select from Drawing. And I'm going to choose this feature line on the right, and then the connector, and then the other feature line on the right. I'll click OK. This also represents a vertical target, so let's come down to Right Blend. I'll click. I'm going to be selecting these from the drawing. We'll hit those same targets, the right side, the connector, and the right side here. I'll click OK. Let's take care of the left blend horizontal. I'm going to select from drawing. Here I'm selecting the left side, the connector, and the feature line on the left. OK, and then vertically we're going to come down to left blend. We'll select these from the drawing, and I'm going to select the left feature line, connector, and the left feature line here on the north side. When I'm finished, I'll press Enter. I'll click OK and OK, and OK. Let's rebuild the corridor. We'll back up and take a look. This looks pretty good. If I zoom in closer, you can see that we do have some feature lines that are jumping over. Let's correct this. If I select the corridor, I can come up to Corridor Properties, and here on the Feature Lines tab, I'm going to come down to the Branching setting. I'm going to say, if a feature line is looking where to go, rather than looking inward, I'd like you to look outward. I'll click OK. You can see those are now corrected. Let me pan this over. In the interest of full disclosure, I do have one skew feature line through here. This one represents a lane line. Just for a second, let me pan this over. And I'll hover over this marker. We can see that's where the lane line is coming from. Let's pan this back. So that lane's shooting over and then it's cutting across the gap. In the big scheme of things, in this area, I don't need that lane line. So I'm going to select the corridor for the gap. I'll come up and choose Corridor Properties. And then here on the Feature Lines tab, I'm going to come down and say, you know what? You can connect that lane line, but in this case, I'm just going to use a style that says, don't display in the gap area. I will right, then click OK, and I'll press Escape a couple times to deselect. Let's do a quick regen. I'll select the corridor model. We'll go up to Object Viewer. We'll rotate this around and take a look at it in 3D. This gives us a good representation of the drop going around these bends. Let's close the Object Viewer. Let's take a look at this in the Section Editor. I'll select the corridor. I'll go to Section Editor. Let me close the tool palettes here to give us a little more real estate. Let me zoom in and I'm going to lock this area on screen. Let's step through. We can see how the bull nose closes up. As soon as it closes, we'll see that shoot to the other side. And here we can see it opening up for the traffic separator. When I'm done reviewing my model, I'll click the X to close the section editor. Let's zoom out. We'll center this on screen. In our next session, we'll create a top surface for this new corridor, and then we will merge it with the other two surfaces to complete one composite surface representing the entire corridor model.